what I'm trying to do is provide to you a refinement on the projections uh, contained in the June budget of where we believe we are going to be at the end of the fiscal year and to do that on the basis of data uh, that has uh, been collected during the first quarter of the fiscal year. And I'm going to focus on the, uh, the fiscal year and some of you may, may ask about um, projections for the, uh, uh, the two out years. The fact that we went through this uh, in detail in June uh, means I'm going to focus on this fiscal year and the, uh, the updated forecast uh, for the out years uh, we'll lay out for you in the, uh, the second quarter. Uh, second quarter report. So, um, we'll go to the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the, the summary uh, document. Uh, these reports usually uh, have good news and bad news. The, uh, the good news is we remain on target for a uh, balanced budget in 2013-2014. Uh, that good news includes increases in uh, net revenue. Uh, by $69 million, mainly taxation. Um, uh, the not so good news is that is offset by higher spending in the amount of $86 million, um, mostly, uh, uh, virtually all of it relating to uh, increased direct fire and flood control uh, costs. So more money coming in, uh, but slightly more money uh, coming out. Uh, that means our projections today based on the information uh, that we have would see the budget surplus uh, reduced by $17 million down from uh, what we projected at $153 million in June to $136 million uh, today. And as you might expect, uh, we're monitoring that uh, very closely and we'll continue to do so and report out uh, to you and the public. Uh, in the, uh, the months ahead. Uh, what's the breakdown on that? Uh, here it is, the uh, what's up, what's down. Taxation uh, revenue up, but there are differences within that. Uh, personal income tax uh, revenues were, uh, are projected to be down at this uh, stage by $116 million. Uh, on the other hand, uh, corporate income taxes are projected to be up uh, by uh, 165 million dollars. I can tell you also that uh, property transfer uh, tax, uh, the estimate now is for an additional 25 million dollars beyond that which we uh, anticipated in uh, June. On the natural resource side, uh, resource revenues up slightly, 23 million dollars, uh, mostly forestry, um, and uh, that's offset by um, lower revenues out of, uh, out of mining, mostly the result of uh, lower uh, coal prices. Uh, natural gas, which is uh, uh, something that uh, we in this province have had some experience with, uh, I thought I'd just mention right now, uh, employing the, uh, the methodology that uh, Dr. O'Neill uh, uh, recommended for us back in uh, February, we, uh, we seem basically to be on track. Um, it, it seems to be coming in at this point e essentially uh, where we thought it would. Uh, heading into the winter, we'll see what happens uh, uh, to prices as uh, temperatures uh, begin to drop. But uh, right now, no, uh, no pleasant or unpleasant surprises uh, on, the, uh, on the natural gas uh, front. Uh, you may have some uh, additional questions, and I'll. Uh, but there's a breakdown on what's uh, uh, what's up and uh, uh, what's down, and it, it translates into uh, that 69 million dollar uh, figure with respect to uh, to revenue. On the uh, spending uh, uh, on the spending front and uh, uh, expenses, uh, I gave you that figure. 86 million dollars uh, is anticipated for the fiscal year. Uh, most of that relating to uh, fires and floods. Not the worst year by any means that we've had on the uh, forest fire front, but certainly uh, uh, we're spending more than we had hoped for. And uh, I was away last week, but I, I take it there were some 
reports and people might be confused based on the number of fires and the number of hectares that have been uh, uh, consumed by fire. In 2012, uh, 52,000 hectares uh, consumed by uh, wildfire, uh, just over 1,300 fires. This year, it's only 1,200 uh, hectares thus far. Uh, more fires, over 1,700 fires. The uh, uh, challenge here is where uh, those fires have been located. More of them have been in the south, and that has uh, prompted the need for um, uh, rapid response, uh, aerial response, to a uh, greater extent than was uh, the case the, uh, the year before. And uh, that accounts for uh, the, uh, the higher than anticipated or higher than hoped for uh, costs on the, uh, uh, on the emergency side. Uh, on the debt side, the, uh, we're continuing to, uh, to manage very carefully, as you might expect, the objective, of course, being to uh, reduce the debt to GDP ratio within the, uh, the fiscal plan. The uh, taxpayer supported debt is anticip anticipated to be down slightly, uh, that is by $29 million. And uh, in terms of how that translates into uh, to debt to GDP, in February, uh, when uh, I tabled uh, the budget then, we were uh, anticipating a debt to GDP of 18.2%. Uh, in June, that had ticked upwards to 18.4%. We're, uh, we're now adjusting that uh, squarely in the middle to uh, where we are anticipating uh, debt to GDP of 18.3%. Uh, I'm although I don't want to overstate the significance of a 0.1% decline uh, since June uh, on the eve of uh, the next round of meetings with uh, the bond rating agencies and, uh, and investors. I'm off uh, tomorrow uh, for that uh, little tour. Uh, it is good news because they, uh, as you know, and, and we are told repeatedly, uh, place a great uh, deal of importance in uh, setting the target, hitting the target, um, if you can, uh, uh, overachieving. And uh, we've talked in the past, and you all know about the, uh, the advantages that accrue to British Columbia uh, by maintaining the, uh, the AAA uh, credit rating. So uh, if after this people want to talk, I'm uh, off to Toronto, I think New York and, uh, and Montreal to uh, uh, spread the, uh, the news and, and talk to our... Uh, our international investors uh, about the state of the BC economy and the state of the uh, uh, the provincial books. Um, on the uh, on the projection uh, side, we are. Uh, I don't think anyone will be surprised about this. Continuing our practice of being very cautious uh, going forward. Uh, no real change. I can tell you that um, the. The number you see from the, uh, the private sector is uh, based on a subset of the, uh, the Economic <coughs> Forecast Council, and uh, they have provided that 1.6% uh, uh, figure for, uh, for growth. Uh, we're sticking with 1.4. Uh, how does that, what are the, the highlights of that in terms of uh, uh, positives and, uh, and negatives? Uh, on the positive side, uh, Exports uh, are up. Uh, they are up uh, year to date uh, by almost 5%. So that's, uh, that's good news. The housing market is uh, showing some uh, modest uh, signs of, of strength. Uh, that's good domestically and uh, in the, uh, the U.S. as well. Um, less positive from my perspective, uh, consumer spending um, still uh, seems uh, sluggish, and insofar as that uh, may be an indication of, uh, uh, of a cautiousness uh, out there amongst uh, families, um, that is a, a factor that we have to uh, be aware of. Uh, on the employment front, uh, we uh, uh, are projecting modest growth, uh, but we have more work to do there, and uh, positioned uh, where we are nationally uh, we uh, we continue to uh, be at or near the top but uh, in terms of our objectives of creating more jobs 
working with the private sector to create more jobs in British Columbia. Uh, we have, uh, I think, more work to do on, uh, on that front. But there are the projections uh, uh, going forward, no uh, significant change. Um, I think the, uh, the private sector number for 2014 is down 0 0.1. I, I think the Forecast Council had it at 2.5 uh, back in, uh, in June. I'll, I'll check that if that's... Uh, um, risks, well, um, there's always risks, and we tend to worry more about the, uh, the downside than the, uh, than the upside. Um, you've heard me talk about this uh, in the past, the, uh, uh, the global situation, uh, of course, uh, in Europe, uh, the sovereign debt uh, crisis, uh, recessionary tendencies over there, the relationship with, uh, uh, with China. Uh, and, and Europe being China's biggest uh, customer, uh, how that impacts their purchasing uh, behavior with respect to uh, British Columbia. Uh, I sound like a broken record, but uh, for British Columbia, trade diversification being, uh, uh, again, that much more uh, important. Uh, Mr. Dinsa, uh, the exchanges that take place between uh, our countries, uh, again, emphasizing the importance uh, that I think both countries have a sign to uh, uh, amplifying and uh, expanding the, the trade linkages that uh, exist between our, uh, our countries. Uh, domestically, uh, natural disaster, fires, floods, floods more so in the, uh, the spring than, uh, than fires, uh, represent ongoing, uh, ongoing risks. We, uh, as you know, continue to uh, uh, maintain within the budget uh, a contingency uh, allowance and a forecast uh, allowance, which uh, the forecast allowance stands at uh, 150 uh, million dollars. So um, there is uh, that measure of uh, additional prudence uh, that continues uh, to be maintained in the budget. But we'll be, uh, of course, watching uh, all of that closely going forward. Um, I promised you last time that uh, we keep you. Uh, uh, a prize on the uh, the status of uh, property and uh, and asset sales. Uh, about 42 percent of the target has been uh, realized of the uh, the current property and asset sale target of 475 million dollars. Uh, we're uh, we're five months into the uh, the fiscal year. I think you get these slides if I'm not uh, mistaken. So I won't um, I won't dwell on this. Uh, the point being. Uh, uh, I've said as a target, we've said as a target that by the end of October, the properties uh, that are slated for disposition uh, in this fiscal year will uh, will be on the market, and uh, and you'll know, uh, uh, you'll see and and hear the activity uh, taking place around that. I thought I'd on the next slide give you uh, examples of the uh, of the properties that uh, have been sold or or have negotiated contracts in place if there are. Specific questions, uh, you'll see it's uh, a lot of schools. Um, there is uh, uh, the one property uh, in Kitimat uh, relating to uh, LNG development uh, that you see there. If there's questions, we can get you the, uh, the information about the specific sites. Um, and here are some other properties uh, that uh, I expect will be on the market um, later in the fall. And again, if there are uh, questions uh, about those, I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, the, uh, the Legislative Committee is uh, kicking off its uh, consultation work. I, in fact, I, I think I'm going to meet with them later today uh, as they embark upon uh, their tour. They're, uh, they're releasing the uh, consultation paper, and I think they've already planned out their, uh, uh, their tour. It looks like they've got an ambitious schedule ahead over the next, uh, over the next month or so. Uh, their, their task, of course, is to engage with British Columbians and, and ask some questions about uh, the priorities uh, that British Columbians have. Yes, we, uh, we seek for them to uh, engage in that conversation within the context of the government's commitment to a, a balanced budget. Um, and uh, uh, on that front, uh, I, I will tell you, we're not, uh, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, I think. I and some of you have made the point that uh, we are still uh, 
projecting a, a balanced budget on a on a razor's edge uh, at this point. Uh, the wage freeze uh, continues. The uh, uh, core excluded staff. Uh, that wage freeze uh, remains in effect. Uh, the hiring freeze uh, remains in effect. Um, there is uh, uh, there is no room, uh, based on the projections that we're laying out here, for uh, additional spending. Now, having said that, uh, as you look forward. Uh, a couple of years, the, the conversation, in my view, is beginning to change a little bit from exclusively being about how to eliminate a deficit uh, to, in uh, uh, as we look out a couple of years, um, how to uh, allocate the uh, the benefits and the proceeds of uh, modest budget surpluses. So, um, I anticipate that uh, their consultations will. Uh, uh, we'll take some of that into effect and the British Columbians will hopefully have uh, some feedback uh, that they'll want to offer uh, uh, in that context as well. In terms of uh, the, schedule, uh, the schedule going forward, I just mentioned the consultation process. We'll be working on the budget through the fall. Uh, the, uh, the report from the committee comes in uh, November the 15th, second quarter uh, by the end of uh, November, and I, I can't remember if I mentioned second quarter will include the uh, uh, will include the uh, uh, growth projections for uh, for the out years, uh, uh, revised uh, forecasts for the out years, as well. Uh, the Economic Forecast Council meeting. Get your tickets. Don't be forced to pay scalpers' prices. Uh, anyway, you're invited. If you want to come and uh, hear what uh, hear what these uh, hear what these folks uh, have to say, and of course uh, the budget uh, in February of next year.